Hi, I've been on my phone a lot lately, which is the silly thing for somebody to say, but normally I'm pretty good about turning off social media, like getting off TikTok, Instagram, etc. But I've been traveling a lot, I've been in the car a lot, and I feel like you just kind of resort to doing that sort of thing when you're bored. Need to get back into reading, but that's a video for a different day. But I feel like when I get into these loops, I start exposing myself to all of these kind of, I don't like using the word toxic, but like maybe slightly problematic trends that start Start to circulate online, be that on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. And I don't like to be like a drama channel. I don't like to just sit here and like bash on people, but it does spark a little bit of fire in my chest to like say something and just, I don't know, like make sure that amongst all of the noise on the internet, like there is some sort of science and research backed information to withdraw of the, let's be honest, bullshit that sometimes comes from the fitness industry in this world of social media. So these are some things that I feel like I would absolutely never ever recommend as somebody who has their certification as a personal trainer. Now that scope in and of itself is quite limited. I wish I would have gotten a bachelor's in some sort of kinesiology or exercise science. Hindsight is 2020, here we are. But even with like the limited knowledge I have, there are just some things that I wish I would have known at the start of my journey or at any point in my journey and I don't know, maybe we can help one another. Maybe these are some things that you want to know as well. Or maybe you didn't even know that they were a problematic thing. Let's talk about it. I'm already sweating. Okay, I have to interject for two reasons. The first is that um, I filmed this video with no air conditioning on, on like a 90 degree day in Southern California, and it, um, it shows. <laughs> Literally, as this video progresses, you will watch me get sweatier and sweatier. Um, it's so horrendous. However, um, we're looking past it. We are ignoring it, but I also have to draw attention to it because if I don't, then somebody else will. Okay. <laughs> and also, my second thing, let's bring attention to our sponsor for today's video. Thank you for making today's video happen. Our wonderful and amazing sponsor, Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic company with options for every lifestyle, including keto and paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. Their doorstep delivery allows you to skip the grocery store while pre-portioned ingredients and pre-made sauces make cooking a snap on busy weeknights or busy any nights or just when you are feeling lazy as I often do. You also have more options with more flavor. But hold up, does everyone at your table love something different? Now you can mix and match as you enjoy your choice of all 24 recipe options in a single week. You can discover what eating well looks like for you with Green Chef. Here we are in Flavor Town tonight. This is the chili ginger pork salad, which I'm so beyond excited about. This is also a keto, paleo, and gluten-free option. And for me, it's so fun that I can get introduced to these new recipes recipes, these new meals that I would have never tried on my own or even like new ingredients. This is the spicy ginger lime aioli, which is just chef's kisses. And I would have never used this on my own. Like, thank you, Green Chef. Exciting and delicious meals support a healthy lifestyle. So keep mealtime interesting without sacrificing taste. And voila, use my code 135Taylor to get $135 off across five boxes, plus free shipping on your first box. Go to greenchef.com for more details. Thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring today's video and my appetite. Okay, first and foremost, and actually probably the most important on this whole stinking list that I see all of the darn time, I, as a personal trainer, would absolutely never, ever, 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 ever design or prescribe, even like write out a full on meal plan for absolutely anybody. Do you know why? Because it's not in my scope of practice. This is like that thing that I think I fell for so many times as somebody who was like 14, 15 years old trying to get into working out on my own outside of organized sports. And I'd see all of these curated nutrition plans, these like PDFs online. And I still see them eight, nine years later. If you are a personal trainer, you might have like a few chapters on nutrition, a few chapters where they give you like a basic overview. In one of my chapters, like one lesson, I literally got like a debriefing of nutritional panels, like how to properly read nutrition facts on a cereal box. That's great and that's fine, but that gives me absolutely no knowledge on how to tell somebody 
what to eat. In fact, it's actually illegal. It is literally illegal in the United States for a CPT or any sort of personal trainer who does not have a degree in, let's say, dietetics to prescribe a meal plan. It's literally not allowed. Personal trainers can give you like general tips. They can say, hey, maybe your plate should look like this and you should have this many vegetables and this much protein, etc. But when it comes to specifics, that's where a lot of the red flags start to come into play. So just be mindful of that and always look for somebody's credentials. Ask if they don't have them written out on their page. I don't even think mine are written out anywhere. Not that I have much, but that's important. And those are the things that you should know. And oftentimes when you don't see any, they might not have any. I see a lot of personal trainers maybe like make their PDFs, like their meal plans and whatnot alongside a registered dietitian. To me, like that seems good enough, but not fantastic. When in doubt, if you are debating between some sort of nutritional information, always, always, always seek out a registered dietitian. They go to school for this. They have to pass an actual national exam. The bottom line here is that there are a lot of personal trainers that try to tell you exactly how to eat, try to write out exact meals that you should be eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that is just plain and simple not allowed if they do not have the permission to do so. When in doubt, RD it out. That's, that's the new motto. Okay, the next thing I would absolutely never recommend is a boring... What's another word for ass? <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I would never recommend a boring ass workout routine. Here's the dealio. I was always the person that would just like yo-yo through my workout fitness journey. I would go through these patches where I'd be so just lazy and unmotivated and then all of a sudden I would wake up one day and I'm like I'm so unhappy with my body and where I'm at mentally I'm gonna work out seven days a week and go hard in the paint and just basically try and do this 180 but I would only do these workouts that I absolutely despised because I thought that that was the only way to see progress. That was the only way to make myself happy. Even like explaining that out loud, that makes literally no sense. Above all else, this is like a phrase that I absolutely love. I don't know who said it first. Give them all the credit if you know in the comments, but the best workout routine that you can do is the one you can actually stick to. If you are trying to force yourself to go to the gym every single day and weight lift and you don't like it at all, stop immediately get out of town leave the gym it is not sustainable the things that get you up out of bed in the morning that get you motivated to go work out and move your body in any capacity is the best way to live your healthy lifestyle because at the end of the day something that i always worry about is waking up in 30 years and regretting a chapter of my life where I was so beyond unhappy because I was forcing myself to do something that I just genuinely didn't enjoy. I do love going to the gym and I do love lifting weights, but if I hated that and I was spending an hour or two every single day or four times a week doing that, and then 20 years down the line, I look back and I'm like, why was I wasting so much of my youth, my childhood, doing something I hated every single day? I would be so mad at myself. That's like kind of a, an issue that I always see in like the niche of promoting a healthy lifestyle and moving your body in this way or that way. It feels like there's only X amount of ways to stay fit or to exercise. And that's just big old fat bullshit. I'm cussing a lot this video and maybe that's because we're, we're kind of ranting and that's fine too. We love a rant, but I, I apologize for my crudeness. There is a tremendous amount of research that supports strength training as a wonderful way to develop your body, as a wonderful way to preserve muscle, just overall support a general healthy lifestyle. However, if that is compromising your own happiness, in my eyes, it's 1 million percent not worth it. There are millions, millions of ways kind of, million might be a big word, but there are hundreds of ways to move your body and that doesn't need to be limited by just going to the gym or just going on the Peloton or hot girl walks. Maybe you literally hate walking. Like, don't do it. It sounds so plain and simple, but I think we can so easily get persuaded into following exercise regimes that our friends are doing or that we're seeing as a popular way to lose weight, get in shape, and maybe that's just 
some sort of activity that you despise. Don't ignore that. That is your life. That is your time. That is your energy that shouldn't be wasted on just following a popular trend. Do what makes you happy. This next one, I am definitely like a little bit of a hypocrite for as somebody who started their YouTube channel under such ignorance and just plain naiveness, naivety. I was naive. What is the right way to say that? But basically I would never recommend any sort of quick fix. In fact, I would never encourage a short term quick fix goal. I think when it comes to our own happiness with where we are at with our bodies or our mental health, we want instant gratification. We want that one singular workout to immediately like tone our arms and then we're going to leave the gym with massive biceps because that's that's the world that we live in. Like even with social media, you you want likes, you want that instant affirmation, that confirmation that like you're doing something right. And we want the exact same thing with our health and our bodies. But the cold hard facts is that it just takes time and patience and consistency. And really, if you're out here following a healthy lifestyle, that means your entire life. That doesn't mean something that is going to be solved in just two weeks time. And like I said, I'm guilty of that. Like that was so much of the content that I used to make on this channel because I was uneducated myself. And I thought everybody else is doing these like two week transformations. Maybe they work. Maybe they I do get abs in two weeks. Hashtag Chloe Ting. Hashtag not true. Hashtag help. That is, of course, just like beyond unrealistic. However, if we want to put a positive spin on that comment, what I would absolutely recommend, and I was actually thinking I could do a part two to this video where I'm not just a freaking negative Nelly. We can do all the things I would recommend as a personal trainer. In this circumstance, I would always recommend setting short term momentum goals for yourself. Let's say it's very difficult for you to find time to work out two times times per week. Set that as a short term goal where you can hit those two workouts twice a week for two weeks and then you can build off of that. But it should never be in regards to how you look and the number on the scale or the size of your jeans. It's like a one lane road. It's like a dead end road. What What is the I don't even know the correct phrase, but basically it's like leading yourself into a dead end. You're going to find yourself frustrated and unmotivated at the end of those two weeks. If all of a sudden you realize you did didn't get a six pack in two weeks time. It literally isn't physically possible, but in the world of social media, that's not always clear as day. Short term goals to help your longer term goal. Awesome. Short term fixes. Not so much. This one's kind of, it's not controversial, but I feel like I always talk about this and I always go back and forth on this, but the general message I would like to get across is that I would not recommend relying too much on trackers, specifically an Apple watch, a Fitbit, um, even your health app, like on your phone. These are so beyond handy. However, they are not 100% accurate by any means. I've gone through phases where I wear this religiously and then the next week, like I chuck it at the wall and I never want to see it again. I'm currently in the, I'm not wearing it sort of phase. It's completely dead right now. But I think sometimes like I get so reliant on it and I will get so in my head if I don't hit a certain number when I'm trying to work out a certain active calorie amount, or if I don't get a certain number of steps per day, even if I feel like at the end of the day in my head, I had a really good day. I was really active. I got my steps in. I had a really great workout. But if those numbers don't match up to what I'm telling myself in my head, I get bummed out. And then like my mood is ruined. For what? <laughs> I think Apple Watches or any kind of tracker can be extraordinarily helpful. But my overall recommendation is that I would just not rely on them as Bible. Like this is a fantastic tool if you need that little bit of accountability or you just want something to, I don't know, kind of motivate you. Like when they've got those notifications telling you to stand up, do I ignore all of them? Yes, but should I? Probably not. So sometimes like they are a helpful boost, but it's just mindful to remember that this is not the end all be all. The science and the data behind this is pretty darn accurate, but it is not like 100% reliable. This is not a determinant of your work ethic or your mentality or how much effort you've been putting in at the gym. It's just this cute little tiny toy that costs a little bit too much money in my eyes. Next, 
I would never, absolutely ever, ever, ever recommend working out seven days a week. If you are like an exceptional athlete, you do you. Like this video is probably not for you. You probably don't even watch my channel to begin with. I feel like I've been in those phases where if I'm just so unhappy with myself, I just want to go full throttle, like I mentioned before. And a lot of times that leans into this idea that we have to be going to the gym and then going on a walk and then going for another walk or a run, just pushing yourself beyond your limits. And the best way to actually see progress is allowing your body and your muscles to recover. And that's one of those things that's so almost like frustrating and difficult to wrap your head around because you think in your mind, I must be moving absolutely every single day. But our bodies don't have that time to rebuild everything that we've broken down in that time that we are pushing it so hard. And the time that I take to prioritize my sleep, my nutrition, my water intake, hello, gallon of water, all right? And rest days, like that is when I actually feel like I'm seeing the most progress. And it feels counterintuitive, I know. I get it, but not allowing your body that time to recover will never help you reap the benefits of the amazing effort that you are putting into your workouts. Also, in general, like that's just exhausting. We really want to be working out seven days a week. I personally don't. For me, like my sweet spot is usually about four workouts per week and going on walks almost every single day when I can, especially with Reese. Like I want to make sure that I'm exercising her. So it's kind of like a two for one little combo wombo deal. But when it comes to me, like going into the gym, if I'm hitting the gym four times per week, I'm solid, I'm happy with that, and I can enjoy my weekends. If that's when I wanna take my rest days, I like to take a rest day in the middle of the week because then I can kind of feel like I can smash those final two workouts, boom, boom, with all my effort. And then I come back feeling nice and rejuvenated after a nice long weekend of doing diddly squat. That's the best. I need you all to know that I am um, sweating my little bahootie off in this car right now. Why did I think this would be a smart video idea to film? In a 90 degree weather, I am intermittently blasting the air conditioner on my face so <laughs> that's my disclaimer at the end of the video but rounding this off nice and appropriately the last thing I would never recommend as a personal trainer is a double negative I would never not adapt my workouts let me explain a lot of times on the internet the term progressive overload gets like thrown around left and right and it's it's kind of a buzz term in a way but it's also extraordinarily helpful in the context of seeing adaptations in your body and in your workouts so basically progressive overload is something that can be applied in so many different aspects of your routine when you're working out you constantly want to challenge yourself because our bodies are really freaking smart and if we are doing the exact same workout every single day our body's gonna be like hey I got this I know exactly what to expect I know exactly what to do and it's going to adapt to learn exactly how to do that workout like a professional but if we're wanting to see a little bit of change and a little bit of progress in our mental health and our physical health then we have to slowly adapt that workout aka progressively overload it. Let's say you're in the gym and you're doing bicep curls. Maybe you're going to do them at a little bit of a slower pace so you can increase that time under tension. Or maybe you're going to increase the number of reps that you do, the number of sets that you do, the amount of weight that you're using. It's one or two of these things, not all of them. Don't get overwhelmed. I know it feels kind of like blah, but I promise it's just a simple term to basically mean make sure that you're constantly thinking about how you're pushing yourself in the gym. I know I go through these phases where every single time I'm going to do shoulder raises, for example, I'm picking up the exact same weight. And maybe that's because I'm weak in my shoulders, I don't know. But also I'm not pushing myself maybe as hard as I know that I can. That doesn't mean I'm always going to be successful. I might go X amount of reps to failure, but I need to be pushing myself so that my muscles are adapting and learning to grow beyond the amount that I'm normally pushing them. All in all, just kind of like check in with yourself every once in a while. Realize like, hey, am I lying to myself? Am I going into the gym and pushing myself as much as I absolutely can? Or am I kind of cheating the system? Because at the end of the day, who are you really competing against? You versus you, baby. I need to go freaking get like an iced coffee, cool the heck down and turn on the air conditioning. I hope that you are safe right now, enjoying your day. Thank you for tuning in to watch this. If you have more recommendations that you would never ever recommend as an RD, a nutritionist, a certified personal trainer, or somebody with a bachelor's in exercise science, any of the above, let me know in the comments. Or if you have any opinions on this, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. And um, I hope I won't be sweating as much in that video. <laughs> Love you.